I wanted to just warm the crowd up and see how culturally relevant some of our awe instructors are simultaneously. So I'd like to just make a couple of very quick points before I turn it over to our great uh, chemist, uh, Dr. Tim McMahon, and um, at the end or at any point if uh, someone had a, a question or a comment uh, to add, you would be most welcome. All right, so just to ask uh, questions. If you were asked what is the per capita production of carbon dioxide. So if you take uh, the United States carbon dioxide production, now this would not only be personal, but you know the military and all governmental things. And then you could even turn a few other things like methane production into carbon dioxide equivalent. So if you take um, the United States' uh, carbon dioxide production and divide it by the number of Americans, you would feel, and we will know because this person, all right, so if you were to say this, I'm like, that's the wrong answer. Um, so what would be the correct answer uh, for uh, each of us here? What is our per capita contribution to uh, the United States uh, carbon dioxide in tons? How many tons of carbon dioxide entering the air were you responsible for last year? What's your thought? 16. 16. Excellent. All right. Now, um, is it always this way? Well, let's just take a few other places around the world. If you were to go to the average person living in China, all right, compared to an American citizen, where we've just established 16 tons as their annual contribution, what would it be in China? 20, 13, 7? 13. 13. <laughs> no. All right, it would be 7. All right. What if, would it be for the average Indian citizen? What are your thoughts? Less than what you have there. <laughs> so so uh, the World Bank's data, and this is a tricky thing. This is, I'm just using one standard um, set of data. You could calculate uh, carbon dioxide equivalents a little differently, um, but uh, 1.6. And then finally, um, individuals living in sub-Saharan Africa? 0.8. 0 0.8. 0 .8. All right. So you are not normal. I am not normal. <laughs> Our contribution is not the highest. Australia is higher than us. Netherlands is higher than us, Saudi Arabia is higher than us, but we are certainly among those who are producing more uh, carbon dioxide um, per uh, year. Now, point number one is we produce carbon dioxide and a lot. 16 tons, that's a lot, and that's what each of us, uh, our per capita share of the United States output was last year. Second point, if you were to compare the average world citizen today, what they produce, and the average world citizen in 1960, which number do you think goes to the modern one? 3.1 3 .1 or 5 tons? Five. Five. Oops, sorry. I want to put there. And 3.1 would be 1960. So yeah, that's not only correct, but that means not only um, are we contributing tons, but that it's increasing. We produce carbon dioxide, and the per capita production is increasing. Third quick point. If we were to ask how many people were alive in 1950, all right, um, well, it was smaller, 2.5 billion people, all right. But if you look at the average um, number of children per woman in 1950, it's five. Globally, the average family size was five. So while it was 2.5 billion, it was obviously going to go up. If you look at 1970, now there's more people because the 1950s families had so many children. There are now 3.7 billion people on the planet, all right? Um, and the uh, number of children is now four per family. It's still going to go up, and it will go up as long as that number of children is bigger than 2.2, all right? Um, in 2011, very recently, the uh, global population is 7 billion. It's more than double what it was when I was born in 1966, all right? Now, if people produce carbon dioxide and the amount is increasing over time per person, the number of people are increasing over time. It's double what it was when I was born. Obviously, that's a problem. Now, to try to put it in perspective and, and make it culturally relative, we can ask you know, our awk instructors for help. There are three jokers here from three different years. All right, let me drag the 1966. Which joker is from 1966? Middle. Middle. Which joker is from 1989? Okay. Other way. Other way. Okay. All right. Excellent. 
Now, let's, that's good. Now, let's put the jokers with a chart showing what carbon dioxide levels have been doing over time. Because if everyone's producing some, but the per capita contribution is going up, and the number of people is going up, one would expect levels of carbon dioxide to increase. So, joker number one, 1966, would go there. Joker number two would go there. Joker number... Now, look at the line, all right, which is representing levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There's not that much time, globally speaking. I mean, our lifetime is not that grand in the scheme of, of you know, human history. But in, in the history of jokers, we have seen a significant increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in um, the atmosphere. All right? In the history of the Beatles, once again, same question. Which of these pictures, and one of these pictures is the recent establishment of the Beatles channel on Sirius XM, uh, FM. Uh, which of these is from 1959? Probably the black and white one. Black and white one, which is 1969. Hair is longer, 2017, that's the serious channel. All right, now if we were to put this on a scale, 1959 Beatles down there, 1969 Beatles down here, 2017 you're a Beatles channel where Ringo's about to come out with an album, I could have used one or two. Now, Beatles are not that long in the history of, of humanity, but when the Beatles start, the amount of carbon dioxide in the air is 316 parts per million. Now, what I'm about to say, it's not the annual, I know I think around like 404 now, but briefly in May, the week of May 14th of this current year, it crossed 410 parts per million for the first time in millions of years. Um, and so, going from 317 to 410 in the lifetime of the Beatles, that's quite an increase. That's an increase of a quarter, a fourth of the carbon dioxide in the air right now is new in the lifetime of the Beatles. So not only are things changing, all right, they're submitting, they're um, uh, changing uh, rapidly. Now I've been using, like starting at 300, if we were to have, you know, down at zero. Um, so carbon dioxide levels uh, keep going up uh, and up. Final slide before we get to um, uh, Dr. Uh, McMahon. Um, now, as hard as it would be for many of you students to appreciate this, um, some of your instructors are old. All right. The one speaking, born 1966. This is how much carbon dioxide was in the air when I was born. All right. Um, the other off instructors in the room much younger than I am. But look, you'll see this. You'll see this little instructor there. You know, get all upset by that level. Um, now, off students now. All right. Probably the freshmen coming in are between 1999 and perhaps the youngest of the year 2000. Um, now, instead of being, you know, in the 320s, as it was when I was born, when uh, young ox students were born, the parts per million of carbon dioxide was 370. In the year 2015, for the first time in millions of years, it passed 400. All right, so once again, when the Beatles started, you know, 316, uh, when I was born, early, low 320s, it passed 400, okay? And um, in May of this year, it crossed 410. So, carbon dioxide levels are going up. Who cares? All right, carbon dioxide you do anything or mean anything? Well, here to tell us this, and he's going to give you the right information. I may at the end add a couple of videos with, you know, superheroes or, or who knows what, but giving us the right information of our chemist, Dr. Tim McMahon.